To be able to use table storage, first you need to create a storage account. For example, I can create a storage account for myself. Inside the storage account, you can create a few tables. For example, users and posts. Next, you can store your data inside these tables. Each row in the Azure Table Storage table is referred to as an entity. And these entities can have multiple properties. For example, name, email, phone number, etc. You can have up to 252 custom properties per each entity. On top of that, there are three system entities which need to be populated for your entity. These properties are partition key, row key, and timestamp. So let's take a look at these concepts again. You can access Azure Table Storage by using its URL. The URL consists of the name of the storage account followed by table.core.windows.net. And as you saw before, you need to have a storage account created to be able to access to Azure Table Storage. Inside your Azure Table Storage, you create a table. A table is a collection of entities and no schema is enforced. You store your entities inside the table. Each entity has a set of properties. You can think of entities as database table rows. And finally, each entity can have a few properties. These are in the form of name value pairs. For example, for the person entity, you can have first name, last name, and email properties. This is a sample Azure Table Storage entity in the Azure portal. As you can see, my entity has five properties, three system properties, partition key, row key, and timestamp, and two custom properties, name and email. And I can simply add new properties to this entity. It is important to note that you can have entities with different amount of properties stored in the same table. There is no schema enforced. Now let's take a closer look into properties. So a property is a name value pair. Each entity can include up to 252 properties to store data. Each entity has three mandatory system properties, a partition key, a row key, and a timestamp. So Azure Table Storage is going to divide the data in your table into different partitions. This means you can query entities with the same partition key more quickly and also insert and update them in atomic transactions. So we have three system properties. The first one is the partition key. And as you learned, it is used by Azure Table Storage to put your data into different partitions. The developer is responsible for inserting and updating its values. Same goes for the row key. The developer is also responsible for inserting and updating its values. And finally, the timestamp. You don't need to worry about inserting and updating the value for the timestamp property. The server automatically manages the values for timestamp and these values cannot be changed. So now let's talk about Azure Table Storage limitations and SLA. An entity in Azure Storage can be up to one megabyte in size. This means the total size of all the properties for a single entity shouldn't exceed one megabyte. So if you search the term SLA for Azure Storage Accounts in your search engine of choice, you can find this page. I am going to add the link to this page in the course resources file so you can take a look at it in more details. You can find the SLAs for all services of Azure Storage Account. We are interested in the Azure Table Storage SLAs. As you can see, querying a table can take up to 10 seconds. Batch table operations, for example, batch updates or batch deletes, can take up to 30 seconds. And all single entity table operations, including inserts, updates, and deletes, can take up to 2 seconds. These are the maximum processing times, and the actual and average times are expected to be much lower. However, this gives you an idea of the SLAs and the times you need to expect when working with Azure Table Storage. Also, I have added a link to a document explaining design best practices to use Azure Storage. I would suggest you go ahead and take a look at this document if planning to use Azure Storage accounts. So what if I need a better SLA for my application? For example, less latencies. There is a premium offering for Azure Table Storage. Azure Cosmos DB Table API is the premium offering for Azure Table Storage. And we are going to take a look at this offering in the later modules.